Hi everyone, it's Jerry Ann with Scrap and Stamp Creations.blogspot.com and welcome to 2016. I haven't done a Ustream show in forever. Um, life has been crazy. However, um, I'm starting to get a handle on things. Um, I am going to have to um, sit down and figure out a couple of different pieces because I do have um, the first Monday of every month I need to be at a Boy Scout meeting. And um, other than that, there will definitely be hits and misses. I may try and move the time up. Um, from six o'clock up to maybe four or so. It really just depends. I need to talk to Jean Music Scrap and find out um, for sure when she streams and to what time um, because I don't want to run over the top of her on those um, on those days. So I definitely um, want to chat with her. Thanks a lot, Sue. Um, for some of you, it might be really helpful for me to come on earlier. Um, just because a lot of you are on East Coast or European time. I know that there are a lot of us as well on the West Coast who pop by. Uh, if you have an opinion, please share that with me. I'd really like to hear it. Um, so anyway, I have not been all that crafty. I have used some of my select product credit and purchased some different items. And that, and like I said, the brand new catalog has a lot of really cute new things in it, um, including, um, let's see here. Including some dies and um, Stampin' Die sets. So, um, the, that's probably the newest thing. Um, there are four sets actually. There's a, there's a nautical set, um, that I just haven't found a reason I need it yet. So there is this cute little cactus set, um, called Stuck on You. The item number is Z3200. And these are the, um, thin, thin cuts. So these are basically, um, little pieces. The cool part about the Close to My Heart, um, uh, thin dies, they come on a magnetic sheet, you guys. That is the way that they are coming. They come with their own magnetic sheet. So they are not taped to a piece. They are magnetic on a magnet sheet. So, um, they are really, really nice. They cut really nice. Um, so these are the stuck on you ones that we're going to use tonight. And I haven't used these ones yet. I use the other ones. Yeah. The idea that they come in such a package and then they also come in the, um, all right, let's try this again here. Um, they also come in a, um, in the, the, um, the plastic polyurethane sleeve. So basically you've got a couple of pieces of protection here. So that's nice. Um, they can go right in, you know, if you really wanted to save space, you could slip these right in with the stamp set that coordinates with them. Now you do have to buy the um, stamp set and the die separately. Um, and I can't remember how much they are right off the top of my head. Hold on, I'll find that for you guys here in just a second. And I gave you the link. Um, Um, the stamp set is $13.95, I think. I think it's the same one here. Hold on. Let's see. Yeah, the stamp sets are $13.95, and the coordinating dies are the same price, $13.95. So that is a really great deal. Um, well, I know a lot of people with the, um, you know, will fussy cut or do... 
these um, do not match up with any of our current um, Cricut cartridges. And we definitely will have more of those. But um, at this point in time, um, the nice thing is, is that you do get a magnetic sheet. So this is really catering to those people who really like dyes and don't like to fussy cut like our friend Martha. So um, we're going to use this stamp set tonight to make maybe some Valentines. So I'm pretty excited about that. And again, they come in the nice little sleeves. So really on a magnetic sheet and that. The only thing I really think I'd like is if they lost the snaps on our things and had it as a tuck-in, because you definitely would be able to put more in them. So yeah, Martha and the No Fussy Cutting. So um, what I already have used is um, this one called Springtime Wishes. It's the thin cuts. And it has 11 dies in there. And then you have the stamp set C1641. And the die cuts are Z3201. And I can show you, the, this is kind of the little box that I created that we'll make tonight. And, that, and so these are the cards and envelopes that I stamped. And then, of course, the box as well. I did use an additional um, stamp set, but they are just beautiful, just really nice. Now, I, I stamped first and then die cut everything. Gosh, I'm really washed out. Hold on. Let me turn my light off and see if I can make a difference here because these cards are real white. Yeah, there we go. Um. And they're pastel -y cards, so on top of it. These are already there. I'm glad. Um, and I added some Winkastella because I, you guys know I like the shimmer. And then I added a little decorative edge to the envelope. So I made the envelopes, which we're going to do tonight as well. And then we made the box to go in. So this makes a nice little gift for someone, a little thank you note. Um, you know, just a little nice little package, something very simple and easy. Um, I feel like I'm in the dark now. So, yeah, so that's these ones. And then the stamp of the month for this month is this really nice, um, I want to call it a rose set, but it could be a peony and everything too. It's got a Valentine's Day, thinking of you and all of that. And I did do a set with these as well. These you have to fussy cut. There's no thinlets or um, Cricut cuts for those. But here is the box that I created with it using pomegranate ink and pear. Pomegranate, or no, pomegranate and um, fern. And so these are the cards that I created for those. This is the little flower here. So I have a thinking of you, a love you card, and two, you mean so much to me. So these can be Valentine's Day or that. And then I used the large flower on the envelopes. And this is a two-step flower and that. So that works out really nice. I do have a pile of flowers cut out. I was stamping up with this as well. And so that was really nice. So this has four cards and four envelopes. And so I'm going to teach you guys how to use, how to make the box tonight because it's really very easy. Um, I wanted to show you two other sets. We're going to use the thinlet set because I want you guys to see that. I'm actually dying to use this set because it is a butterfly set and it's so pretty. Um, but I may wait for some watercolors and do the watercolor thing with these. So maybe next week we'll play with these. And that these are B1516 and they are called Your Beautiful Self. Really pretty butterflies. If you guys are butterfly people like me, I'm a butterfly person. And then um, I really like the, the whimsy looking flowers. Um, and so I did also pick up Friend in Me that's got um, these really nice big retro looking flowers. 
and everything in the set. Um, it says, friends make everything so much better. You've got a friend in me, sisters for life, friends forever. And it's just a really nice, another nice little flower set. Again, this you'd have to fussy cut yourself or make some pattern paper, which I think I'm going to do with this one. I think this is one we're going to make some pattern paper with. So I do have some things to play with. I do have some stamp sets to, to work with. It's just a matter of a couple of things, being motivated as well as um, feeling like, I'm capable of kind of doing that. So this is the stamp of the month for this month for January. The next one is a balloon stamp that'll be really pretty for um, for the uh, birthday cards. So, and then the, the final set that I have, I don't have the, the nautical one, but I do have this one, which is called Spring Critters. And it's got the animals and everything and a banner and then lots of words. Hello there, birthday wishes. You're the best. Thanks a bunch. Happy Easter. How you doing? And then again, it's got um, the dies as well. So this one's got four humongo dies in it. So that's really good. Um, so anyway, that is for an upcoming project. And... Do you guys have any questions on the new catalog or any of the things that are kind of out there right at the moment? I'm going to turn my light back on because I feel like I'm in the dark. And I'm going to push you guys out. <laughs> I can introduce you to Darby. She's sitting here at my feet in her bed. <laughs> yeah, they are really neat. All right. Before we get to the stamping part, because I want to be able to have everybody be able to see how to do the box, and um, and we'll get our envelopes kind of done as well, and then everything will be ready to put together once we have um, the parts done, and then um, for those who are going to run away, run around. Um, or have to run out because it gets later that, then you at least get to see how to do the box. You'll get to see how to do the envelopes and you'll get to, um, you'll get to see how to do the box, the envelopes, and then a couple of the cards. Oh, <laughs> he's not gonna eat the, she, she, Darby is a she. Um, Princess is at grandma's house right at the moment and she still lives here. She just happens to be a car ride kid, a car ride dog, and she loves to go in the car. So she just kind of is coming back and forth between my house and grandma's house right at the moment. And, um, and so we'll probably see her in another week, week and a half or so. Um, but then I will have some nice pictures of her and Darby together. So I'm going to, I'm going to pull Darby up for you guys to say hi to her. Yeah, well, the kitties are still around, let me tell you. And Darby thinks that they should be fun to play with. And that, and so her and Periwinkle are the best of buds. Oh, Darby. Hi, you want to come meet my friends? Do you want to come meet my friend? Come here. Come here. Come here, girlfriend. Oh. So come sit on my table for a minute. You say hi? Yeah, you say hi? It's okay. Yeah, I know you just woke up, huh? You say hi? Look up. Look up. Look up. Here, if you look up. If you look up. Oh, what are you doing? Yeah, you look up. Look up at the camera up there. Yeah, up there. Right up there. Yeah. <gasps> oh, yeah. Yeah, so this is Darby. She's about six, seven weeks old. 
She's a Red Nose Healer Lab Mix. And she's adorable. She's fun. Plus, she won't fit on my desk that much longer. And that. She snores. And that. And she's fun. Um, she smells like a puppy. And that, which is great. Um, she is, she's just doing awesome. Hopefully we'll be able to train her for a service animal for Harrison. And that she's about six weeks, six, seven weeks. We're going to the vet tomorrow. So hopefully, um, we'll know a little more. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Huh? Oh, is it going to give me kisses? Oh yeah. They're like, please put me back. All right. Say goodbye to everybody. All right, Darby, there you go. You're like, here. It's okay. Go. You're here, bud. There you go. There you go. With your friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that is Darby. All right, so shall we go ahead and get started with the box that we're creating tonight? Now, the cards that you're making, you can put in our famous box. You can put in any of the boxes that we've created or any of the bags or any of that. Um, so definitely know that these cards will fit. You just kind of have to finagle them. I love the fact that the box is just open. You can put a piece of ribbon around it and a little tag and you've got a great gift. Um, that really doesn't take a lot of time or a lot of supplies. Um, you can do a variety of different um, themes. You can do all birthday cards. You can do kids. You can do adults. You can do a sympathy pack. You can do all kinds of stuff. And hand them out to your friends really without, you know, a lot of people don't make handmade cards. They're spending anywhere from, if they go to the dollar store, a dollar for a card up to five dollars for cards and so the idea of giving a card is really <laughs> really good um but um i will be making uh one that fits full size right now we are using the little um note card size which is a piece of five by seven card stock folded in half to make a three and a half by five inch card so I am going to use the, I'm going to use again, the Stuck on You um, Thin Cuts, as well as the Stuck in You Stamp Set, C1643 and Z3200. And then we are also, I'm going to use for the colors to do this, I'm going to use the Kaleidoscope um, Paper Pack, which is x7202b it's got some really pretty papers and everything in it um i probably will use um the green side and that however it's just got some really pretty pretty papers um this one has more of a an ombre to it we've got one with a green check um just some really pretty this is um a bokeh piece in yellow and that so we'll definitely get a chance to play with these a little bit um the colors in this packet um and the colors of ink we'll use will be canary gypsy pacifica pear pixie sunset white daisy of course black and slate because you know those are my colors especially that slate color all right so I'm going to go ahead and slip these in here so we don't lose track of where they went. Where are you, Darby girl? Oh, Darby girl, you missed. Hold on, ladies. Darby, hey. Yeah. That was where you were supposed to be, girlfriend. Did you forget? Did you forget? Did you forget? Yeah, did you forget? Huh? Okay. She's doing so good potty training. All right. 
What? Are you coming up here or are you staying in there? What are you doing? Those are my toes. Mine. 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 All right, there you go. Yeah, I shouldn't have woke you up before I was dreaming. So now you're going to want to play with me. All right. So the very first thing we're going to do is we are going to create our box. You are going to need a piece of um, heavy cardstock and that. Um, just because the box really is... I mean, it gets folded and glued and stuff, so it's not really too bad. However, you want something that's a little um, more uh, sturdy than just traditional um, cardstock, you know, flimsy paper, that kind of stuff. So make sure it's a little stiffer or plan on stiffening it up with a layer and that. So our first cut, we are going to do six, seven, eight. 8, 9, 10, 11. So we are using a piece of cardstock that measures 7.5 by 11. And this is going to create our box. Don't know what that is. Hi, you want back up here? 7.5 by 11. Okay. Yeah, what are you doing? Now we're going to take our scoreboard. Are you going to go back in your bed? Or are you going to show my, my, feet, my feet? All right. So there are two ways to do this. One of the ways that I saw a lady on YouTube, she was able to roll over her stuff onto the side edges, which is really good. Um, and the other one, it's more decorative. I... I really rolled over to the edge. The only problem was is when my rose was definitely in the corner, it kind of crunched it. So it doesn't look as pretty that way. So I would definitely make sure your image is at least an inch up and an inch down. But if you have the extra stuff to go off to the sides, that looks really pretty. So, and since we are using the stamp set um, here, I think I'm going to use the grungy stamp set. Um, what is it called? Let me grab it. I'm going to use this one here, Inkblot D1660. Um, and this has just got the splatters and stuff. So I think I'm going to use this for the background um, of my uh, cactus. All right, that's my toe, girlfriend. And you know that, yeah, yeah, that's my toe. Yeah, okay. All right, so I'm sure everybody's going to be like, how come she stopped so much? And it's like, because the dog is going to try and eat my toes. All right, so our very first thing is we are going to score at six and a half on the seven and a half inch side. We're going to score at six and a half and come all the way down. We're going to rotate our paper to the 11 inch side and we are going to score at one inch at five inches at six inches and at 10. Okay. So you're going to have a piece of paper that is scored on the seven and a half inch side at six inches. You're going to rotate again. You're going to score at one inch at five inches, at six inches, and at 10 inches. And this is for the three and a half by five inch cards, okay? So now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my image here. And then we'll go back and finish the scoring and I'll show you where to cut and we'll put our box together. So I'm going to use my Splatted stamp. And I'm going to use Slate because you know I love Slate. I'm going to put my, um, my squishy pad underneath. 
That's her dog toy, not my paper. I'm going to use this big, huge um, piece of, um, see, I think this looks like sand, dirt, that kind of thing. This is a brand new set, so of course I'm um, rubbing off the hair on my arms. And I think I'm going to do a stamp off with this as well. So I don't think I'm going to use it full strength. However, I could, I kind of like it softer. And then I want to be above the inch line and in a little bit. Actually, this is the background piece, so it's not a big deal. If it were the full image, we want to be in that kind of piece. And then I think I'm going to go ahead and move this up the sides. And the bottom kind of to give it that look that kind of comes out and so I know it's really light I just don't know what to do is it really light for you guys to see it just seems so bright is that better for you guys to see or not really or maybe it's the other light maybe it's this light Which is better, you guys? What? Do you want me to take you upstairs so you can eat? What do you think? I just don't want to sit here in the dark. Oh, yeah, that's really dark now. Let's see half light. I don't know. Let's see if we bring it in a little more. That's going to help. I don't know. This is good for you. They all look the same. <laughs> all right. Well, and it, it's just going to be light because it's a clean in. It really is one of those clean and simple kind of things. All right. So I am going to... I'm going to cut off a piece of this sponge because I think I'm going to ink the edges of this one. So we're just going to have a piece of sponge here. All right. I'm going to leave that on there, but I am going to put these back in the thing here. Might come out with some of these splat splats late. Okay. Maybe I cleaned my camera or something. I don't know. I don't know what happened. All right, so we're going to bring our score ba board back in. And now we're going to go ahead and score down the one inch side here as well. Okay? So that's going to give us a score on the seven and a half inch side at one and six and a half. And we scored it afterwards so that the, um, the piece is in there. Maybe. We'll try. We'll play. All right. So the next step in this um, piece is we are going to take our one inch circle punch. Nothing. I'm sitting in the dark. All right. 
we're not gonna fliss with the lighting anymore. I, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I'm good. We're just gonna keep going. Uh, okay. So anyway, we scored. We got all our score lines on it. Now we are gonna go ahead and fold everything up. And make sure things are straight. So now all of our pieces are folded. We are going to take and you are going to cut out the score line here. And here. And here. Princess Darby. Actually, her name is Queen Darby because we have a princess. Harrison wanted to name her Queen. Since we had a princess, we could name this dog Queen. Told him no. All right. We're going to do the same thing with these end ones as well. on each side. Really? All right, and then we're just gonna um, get these out of here. So I just usually pull them up to the front. and cut them off. Uh, she gets to ride in the car. She's going to be, she's just happy to go. She's a car dog princesses so but I really just wanted a dog that barked and Darby does that and um, we've been without a big dog for a year and Darby's not going to be as big as Buddy was but definitely bigger and that. All right. So now that we have that all cut, all the little ends are are there. You guys can see them. You know, I cut all that edges out. You're gonna take your one inch circle punch and kind of line it up and give yourself a thumb tab here. Now I'm gonna take my sponge and I'm gonna sponge all the edges. I really have to get a new pad. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I just would prefer that it not pop apart all the time. <laughs> but this is my well-loved pad. It's the one that I absolutely adore. So it's the color that I really like. All right. So we're just going to sponge the edges of all the pieces. And you want to do front and back. Yeah, I have, Princess doesn't bark. She doesn't yelp. She doesn't, I mean, she only talks to you when you, when she wants you to feed her. I'm going to do edges.
we're going to train her to bark when she hears Harrison's name so that when they're out camping in the snow and all of that kind of thing, that um, if Harrison ever kind of wanders away, he won't respond to his name. He won't say, oh, I'm over here or anything like that. So um, Darby will always stay with him. And then if he ever wanders, they all they have to do is start yelling Harrison's name and she will bark. So and she'll bark. It has been nice having a little dog. However, I really, Princess is four. She, um, we get along really great and the whole bit, but I really wanted a bigger dog. And with everything that's been going on, while I know I people are like, you need a dog like you need, you know, a hole in your head, um, I really am kind of like, I'm enjoying having her. And that. Uh, I really am. So... All right, we're getting close. Yeah, we lost Buddy on New Year's Eve 2014. And I always felt safe with him. If nothing else, I knew he would bark. He'd probably just bark until they fed him. But... that chemistry set. Oh, I want the chemistry set. I think that would make cute Valentines. All right, so now we have our edges are all um, inked. Oh wait, except for this one right here and the front. Now we got it. All right, so now you're going to want to take some wet glue or some strong two-sided tape, something. And we are going to um, glue up our box. I'm going to notch this just a little more so that it lays right. I'm going to notch these just a little more just because I don't want them to get stuck. And while we have enough room there, just, I like the idea. Plus nobody's gonna see them because they're on the inside. All right. Now, we're going to go ahead and do the bottom of the box first. So we're going to take our glue, we're going to turn our box and the, the bottom pieces without the cutout. We are going to put them together and hold for just a couple seconds as the glue takes hold. And remember, we notch the bottom to give it, um, to let it kind of lay in there really well. So you don't want to squish it all the way down because then you would have a box that's going to go in instead of um, sit right. So you want to match the tops. Okay. Oh. Yeah, no. Um. Yeah, 
it definitely would be, it is definitely something that I have for a very long time. Um, have We've talked about it a lot. I know that it would alleviate a lot of my stress. Um, but, you know, um, we'll see how everything kind of works out. We'll know in the next few months if it's going to work really well. Um, Harrison likes her, which is really fabulous. And again, these ones you just want to do. Sophie, hi. All right, so we've got the bottom of our box. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to add glue onto these little flaps right here. And then we are going to fold our box together and push our little flaps down and bring our sides over the closed box. And this is so that our lid closes. So glad to see you guys. I really truly have missed you. Okay, so here is our box, and we will decorate the rest of it um, in a bit. That little side is still not dry enough. It's trying to lift. So yeah, just give it a few seconds. So there is our box that these are going to go into. Oh, I'm happy to be back. It definitely has been an interesting experience. <laughs> totally, an uh, incredibly interesting experience. All right, the next thing I want to do is show you how to do the envelopes because we need five envelopes, and these are um, a smaller size, and so you can buy these envelopes, but I'm sure that they'll be a little pricier. However, you can use copy paper and make the envelopes and stamp them up and all of that kind of stuff, and they're cute. Mm -hmm. And if you do them the right way, you can stamp around the corners of them as well. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and cut these, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, punch and score, and then we'll come back because I think I'm going to have to do some masking for these in order to do... Um, kind of, because I you want the front of the envelope to be flat. So grab your envelope, punch board, or whatever you choose to use to make your little envelopes with. Um, I am making a four bar card, which is three and a half by five. So it says I need a seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter inch piece of paper. So I have five sheets of typing paper all right here together. I'm just gonna cut them all at once. Okay, I'm going to push you guys out a little. Seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Save these for little stamping things or notes, lists, that kind of stuff, or throw them away because really you only need a pile of so much paper that you can make a list on. Now we're going to use our envelope punch board. And again, I'm going to punch and score these all at the same time because really it goes through. So now it says that I need to um, line up at three and an eighth. So you just slip all these in here, and you punch, and you grab your scoring piece, and you kind of go through, through, okay? And then you rotate to your little doohickey line, and you punch hard. 
because you can get through that five sheets of paper. And you score, and then you rotate to the next piece. And you get it in there, and you punch hard. And you do. You can, you can um, stand up if you need to. And last punch, and score. All five at once. No big deal. Little pieces all together. Throw them out. All right. And then we're going to corner around our corners. Stick them all in there. And punch hard. And yes, I'm doing five at once. You can do one at a time. I'm just doing mine all at the same time. That doohickey line. Yep, that's exactly what it is. All right, so now we have our envelopes all created, all five of them ready to go. So we're going to set these aside until we get ready to stamp and do. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I am going to stamp the stamps that we're going to use for the cards on some extra cardstock that I have. So I have this piece of cardstock right here. And we are going to grab our stamps that are behind the scoreboard point and the envelope touch board, which we don't need anymore. Okay. Mm. Darby's cramping my feet style down here. So let's see, we've got one, two, which ones have matching dyes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight, nine. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces. So I usually take this out and I put a big nine right here in the corner so that I know how many pieces are supposed to go back in here. But again, since they're on magnets, we're talking like hard to lose unless it's you or me. All right. So we've got five cards. One, two, Three, four. I think I'm going to stamp each of these. I'm going to stamp the cactuses uh, three times each. And I'm going to stamp the these guys three or four times each. That way we can um, we can have lots to choose from. So I am going to use, what color green was in here? Pear. I'm going to use the pear ink. This is really super bright ink, guys. And we're going to stamp these three times. There's three of those. You know, we can make these look like cucumbers. There's three of the big cactus. I bet you I'm I am out. I'm out. I'm out of those. Okay. I have to go find some baby wipes there upstairs. And let's get three of these.
And then I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stamp these ones in black. And I'm going to have to go find those. I'll be right back. I'm going to grab the, um, I'm going to grab the baby wipes. I'm going to go back and stamp the cactuses too in black. I did find. Uh, at least one. I'm going to stamp one of these each in black. Mm, you know what? I'm going to make sure I have enough. I don't have to use them all. And I still have to stamp the pots. All right, oh, and these pots are solid pots. So I'm gonna wanna have to grab, yeah. Well, and that makes it easier to make a bunch. So now we need, what color should we make the pots, you guys? Sunset is an orange. Let's do sunset. Let's see, shall we do them dark?
Yep, I think we're going to do them dark, like that. There's three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. I might want two for each one. Ten. Now, mind you, I could probably whip out fussy cutting these so much faster than sitting here and die cutting them, but we are, we are using the new thin cuts, so the purpose was to show you how to use them. <laughs> and we will cut all these little puppies out. All right. And here's our little one. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I might need two more, so I'm going to stamp them in the middle of these. One. And two. Okay. All right. You guys ready to see how these work? Let's put these back in their little trusty thing so nothing sticks to my big shot and we lose the stamp that matches the die. Because, you know, that'd be my luck. They give us magnets and I keep the dies safe and I lose a stamp somewhere. Uh, we're going to have to stamp some pink hearts too. We'll come back to that. We might just stamp those, not cut them out. Who knows? All right, grabbing the big shot and it's new plates, or at least it's one new plate. I do have a magnetic plate. I just, yeah, I'm not using it. All right. So again, they're magnetic. So we're going to go ahead and take our Hold on, I've got it. All right, so we have our little die here. And you can use washi tape if you need to. I didn't see I needed to. Then again, I haven't used a lot. See, I'm glad I did extra pieces because that was a little close there. Okay. 
Let's see. We got this one here. There we go. And then this one here. Actually, they don't really move. I have a magnetic, I have a magnetic thing. I have one. Okay, let's see. Okay, this is a huge cluster. Let's go over there. There we go. There we go. All right, so I think those are the five that we did. You guys are so close. Oh, look, it took the little hole out. All right, that might be faster. I cut five pieces at once, Martha. Five pieces at once is probably faster than fussy cutting. I'm going to have to mark these. Look at that one's. Yep, those three go there. And I'm thinking I only got partially through that one. We'll see. Yep, that one I missed a corner because it wasn't all the way on my plate. This one and this one right here done. Okay. 
and this one See, and through the magic of video, they always make it seem like they just like whip this out in no time at all. All right, I don't like these ones. Okay, the other ones were really super easy to line up. These ones are a little more... I'm sure it's supposed to be right there doesn't look right. Well, I guess maybe it does. There we go. Yeah. See? All right, how about we get a couple of the big pots? Oh, uh, no, I got a couple of big pots. Let's do a couple of these, these ones down here, and then we'll get to making a couple of cards.
Kind of reminds me of Larry the Cucumber. Some veggie tails. Practice. I guess that's the deal here. Just practice. At least they aren't so intricate. <laughs> All right. Wow, it's 7.15. All right. Those little flower things? Yeah. I'll have to practice with those. And then all you do is you pick up your thing and... Put them back on here, and they stick. Um, you know, I, I think that the cuddle bug is good, and if you're looking to upgrade because you do a lot of die cutting, then I would tell you yes. But if you just, the, the space that this takes up compared to that is so much more. The cuddle bug, because it all closes up and is a little itty bitty thing, um, it, I, I really like it. Um, but again, it's, it's a personal preference. So, I don't know. All right. So, now we have our little friends cut out. Some of them anyway, because really, yeah. Here's our friends. We have a couple of big pots. And if I need any more big pots, I'm going to need pots. Crap. All right. I'm going to fussy cut those. Really? Let's see. So now I got... Yeah. Jennifer McGuire makes this look so easy putting these together. Some of them are pretty centered, some of them are off. They aren't perfect. And you know what? The person who gets them is never going to say a word about it. Truthfully. I think just more people have it, and um, a lot of the Stampin' Up! reps all use it. 
um, you know, because they sell it. So, of course, you use what you're going to sell. And uh, I don't think there's much of a difference between the two at all. <laughs> Maybe, actually, the, the cutter that I really want more than anything is a Brother Scannon cut. And um, I really do want one of those. So... I guess maybe that's why um, I've just kind of sat out for that. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to grab my trusty watercolor pencils from close to my heart because we have those. And I'm going to use the citrus leaf color and just add a little... And then I'm going to grab my Clear Wink Estella. And it should move around the watercolor and make these all glittery. Okay, that's not really moving as much as I thought it should. I gave my cuddle bug to a friend for her birthday. She didn't have one. These would be fun to color with the um, Shinhan, the alcohol markers that close to my heart sells as well, or some Copics, or even just watercolor. Um, but I, I'm looking forward to doing that. All right, I'm going to color these kind of. I found that the best way to do this is to just color the black lines kind of dark. And use this brush and it just brings the water out so you get kind of a darker piece right where the veins are and then kind of lighter in the other areas aka darker lighter nicer shader who cares
super fast watercolor pencils, aka Jerry Ann style. Interesting. Let's do, I cut those flowers out even though they were a big pain in the butt. Let's do them in a, let's do them in a pinky color and a sorbet. So sorbet and bubble gum. I'm gonna bring this one, I'm gonna have the bubble gum at the center. And this one I'm gonna have, and then I'm gonna bring this sorbet at the end. And then I'll blend them in together maybe. I know, I'm getting fancy. This one I'm gonna start with sorbet. I'm not coloring anything really. I'm just scribbling. And then I'm gonna add the pink on the end. And I'm gonna have to sharpen these because they're getting kind of dull. Okay. I really can't see the colors. Okay. These will look nicer when you guys get a chance to see them in the pictures because really All right, I'm done fussing with those, except for I didn't cut out enough to mask for our trusty little thing. So we will, oh, you know what? I know what we're going to do with those, because that'll be fun. All right, so let's create a couple of scenes here. All right, I got about 15 minutes. 
All right. So Yeah, my cutting is not all that pretty. All right, I'm going to use these two first. Here's my card. Um, let's see. Oh, you know what? I'm going to Let's see here. I think I'm going to do the same style I did with um, um, with these cards. The Cub Ma the Scout Master calling me, and so I'm a little nervous, guys, to be honest. So I need to take that in just a few minutes. Um, so these are three and a half by five cards. So we are going to cut at four and a quarter. No, five and a half, which brings them three by five, which is four and three quarters. by three and a quarter. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my edge off here. And I am going to go ahead and cut this at three quarters of an inch. By four and three quarters. Okay, and then I have a piece that is um, nope, it's the wrong size. All right. Ugh. So now we're going to need a piece of white cardstock that is three by four and a half. To do that on this side. So this is the panel that we're creating. To go on the front of our card.
And let's see what sentiments we've got. I'm going to use the stamp that says sending you a prickly hug. And I'm going to stamp that in black. Down here in the corner of this white piece. And then this little piece we're going to adhere here. I know you guys are watching, right? <laughs> I'm going to bring this pretty close to the edge. Yeah, it says prickly hug. Sending you a prickly hug. And I'm going to stick these together, and then I think I'm going to give it a little bit of... Um, Actually, I think I wanted to stamp this before I put that piece down. I'm going to peel this piece back up. It's just a little bit in the background there. There we go. Well, for somebody that you've totally offended, <laughs> it'd be a cute little thing. All right.
All right. So here is our card that fits in our box. I'm sorry, guys, I'm going to have to go. Fits in our box. And then I have our envelope, which I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to want to use one of these um, that I already cut and one of our pots here. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp our pot. Where's our, where's my stamps here? Oh, and I just mutilated that all over. I got ink all over the place. Great. I'm trying to hurry. So I'm using those two pieces as a mask, and then I'm going to take my splatter here. Stamp it off. Stamp down. Hold in place. Pick up. Stamp down, stamp in place, pick these all up, and we have splatter behind our cactus. And then you just take and fold your envelope up. And give it a good crease. little adhesive on this side here and this side here and up and there is our stamped envelope yeah this white is just really white and our card sits in and now you we can um, put And another little pot for that other weird flower. So yeah, so it really, um, and then you can do the little pieces here or um, you, we can do the flag, that kind of stuff. I just feel bad that I have to go, but um, this is a nice little gift box for everyone. Um, I'm going to finish this one up after my phone call, and then I will um, post it up on my Facebook page, Scrap and Stamp Creations, over on Facebook. 
thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. I know it was a short class, but um, it feels good to be back and hang out with all of you. Thank you guys for joining me, and I look forward to chatting with all of you soon. Good night.